Hello, and welcome back to Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for selecting my channel and watching as I explore the incredible, amazing, global, wide world of pens. As I mentioned a few times, uh, viewers and other pen people offer me pens to review and J120 said I have this capless pen that he bought on Tobu for about $5.50. He bought a bunch of them, so he sent me one. There's also a nice discussion on the Fountain Pen Network. I'll put a link in the video description, so if you could, if you want more information, you can follow that thread. This apparently was commissioned by a Chinese stationery store. This was the label that was on the outside. We'll give you some translations. This was a band that was around here. There was also a plastic insert that had a hole in it that you could use this as a display case item. You know, hanging from a tree or whatever. Mr. Sizemore says, I've looked at it and it's definitely a different pen. I don't know what I can, how I can, and I'm a little bit too big to fit on it, so... It's all yours. This is just your standard plastic display case, you know, a clear cover so a shopper can easily look at it. And we'll see what looks like a ballpoint pen if you didn't know any better. It has the clicker clip and an end to it that has an interesting angle on it. So if you do push it down like you would to use a fountain pen that was capless, you'll see a fountain pen nib come out the bottom. And this feels good. You know, it's a, probably inside of here, it's a basic uh, mechanism that they would use for, you know, a ballpoint. You know, the plating's okay, the color's okay. I mean, it feels good, has some nice substantial weight in the hand. I wouldn't hold it down here, but uh, it's easy to hold on the barrel. And inside this retail packaging is an interesting device. As we pop it out, you may wonder, what is this? Well, what it is is it's a small container to carry around with you. It's a cap that fits well. And you put a little bit of water in here. Because, as if we look inside here, there is no little door. There's nothing to seal that nib up when it's retracted, so it will dry out. They include a cartridge, and there's also a converter in here, which we'll see later on in the video. So we're going to explore this, but first, since I have inked it up with Pilot Blue Black, let's see how that nib works, and then some of you might decide whether it's a pen that you have any interest in whatsoever, but it would probably be difficult to find. J120 was nice to include these six cartridges from Hero. In case I want to use cartridges in this retractable pen, but I use the converter. I'm not a cartridge fan. But it was nice to have the option. So there are many people that seem to want a fountain pen that they don't have to remove a cap. To me, removing the cap is part of the fun of using a fountain pen. So it doesn't bother me. And I find a retracting mechanism to add complexity to it. It doesn't add to the writing experience. And most of the time, the nibs in capless pens are mediocre at best. Sorry if you vanishing point lovers, but that's how I feel. Let's see how it writes. So I've decided to use Pilot Blue Black. I have a huge bottle of it. So I uh, poured it into this nice little ink bottle that uh, Pen BBS gave with their uh, ear of the something uh, pen. I think the magnetic one. So I've extracted this from the pen. This is a push-pull converter 
I call it the lowest end possible. I hate the spring in there, but I'm not going to just pull this thing apart to get rid of the spring. I'm not concerned about whether this pen is going to be used for a while. So we're going to push the piston all the way to the bottom, put it in there to submerge the nib, and pull up. And you can see it, it does work effectively. But I'm always going to do three of these. I've already flushed it with soapy water, but I also think it's good to flush with ink, make certain the feed and everything else is nice and saturated with ink. So for the size of that converter, a decent amount of ink in there. Let's see how it writes. Yes, it was the year of the rat pen, the magnetic filler pen. That included this nice crystal ink bottle. So this is a really extra, extra fine nib. Not my favorite, but it does lay down a consistent line. Dries almost immediately. So it was an everyday pocket carry where you might be writing on poor paper. This nib might work well. It's fairly smooth. But, you know, extra, extra fine nibs are always going to have a fair amount of feedback because of how small the contact area is on the paper. But it does write. But the real key is, is how long can you leave it set? And how long does it, and how much effort does it take to get it to write based on how long you have it set? So we'll need to explore that. Let's take a little bit of a close-up look about how this retractable pen works. This uh, section, if you want to call it that, just unscrews from the bottom of the barrel. Here's that hooded nib assembly. Now, nothing uh, extraordinary about it. But the working end here is a little brass knob there. It fits into the slot at the top of this section. It fits in, it flips around, and it's um, you know hard to move around without the converter being attached. So we'll attach the converter and we'll see how then, once it's in here, it just goes up and down with the motion, then you when you want to retract it, you take it out this way. And the spring here is an essential piece, which we didn't put in before we assembled it. I didn't really think ahead of time. There, it seems to fit well that way. So when we put it together now, it has a nice springy action, which is what you want. You can unscrew this top ring and the clip comes out in that little push button comes out so you could straighten a clip if it got bent or whatever. I didn't pull out any other guts in there but to me this is just a standard ballpoint and they designed a way of making it work with a fountain pen nib. I have to admit creativity is certainly high with this design. Functionality that's something that may or may not be the best. So I think we need to figure out an ink and ink it up and see how that nib writes and how long it will last before it dries out. So in a cleaning out the pen after the second filling which didn't work very well I pulled the nib and feed out of this collar and one of the things that I noticed is, is this nib appears to have been and feed are injection molded together. I think you can see how the plastic is formed around that junction between the feed and the nib. 
it's a little bit of a rough molding. I cleaned up some channel issues here with a scalpel. Uh, originally, I thought maybe that was a nib replaceable, but that's not going to come apart. That's one unit. And you can see another one of those little knobby things I'm going to take off. So I cleaned it up. I think I'm going to really try to ink it with trommel ink because I really don't like cartridges. And this is where the nib fits into. Uh, the other issue I found filling it with a converter is this spring, which you when you take the assembly apart to uh, put it into the ink bottle, the spring comes with it. It could come off, it could drop into the ink bottle, it does get ink in it. I was able to get rid of the spring in the converter, silicone grease that piston in the converter, so we're going to give it another shot. Yes, I'm a masochist. Why am I putting all this time into a cheap pen that somebody gave me? Because it's a challenge, and I want to see if it can actually eventually work at least a little bit. So you may ask, what other retractable shiny pens do I have? And I have these two. This is the Lily one, which has gotten a little bit of discussion. It's discussed on Fountain Pen Network in uh, J120's thread. And this also has no hood to keep the nib from drying out. So it has a similar problem. And the mechanism just doesn't feel as, as good as the one in the current pen. And here's a, another example None of these pens I would ever use. Tried to write with them, the nibs are terrible. But this does have a, a hood in there that helps protect the nib from drying out, or at least that's the theory behind it. It's hard to see, but it's in there. So comparing these three pens, this one definitely, from a functional viewpoint, works better. I like the fact that the, I don't, I like the fact that the clip is up here and not down where you're going to hold the pen, not down near the nib end. But in the pocket, this would be nibbed down, which some people may have an issue with. And if it's going to leak, it's probably going to leak. But J120 says that his pen held up pretty good, so I would expect the same with this. Well, here we are on day two. I've decided to get rid of the Pilot Blue Black and use this Pine Forest ink. I put a label on the top of the cap so when it's in my box of ink, I can actually see what it is. It's the color card. It's just a nice, saturated, well-lubricated, good-flowing ink, like all the Trommels are. I think it may have a little bit of sheen, but it's not going to show up on that paper. So we're going to do a live test. So this pen was inked up uh, yesterday, about 24 hours ago. I wrote with it a little bit. It wrote okay. We'll show you that writing. So now we're going to extract the nib and see how it writes now. And it doesn't write. We're going to do the water thing now to see if we can get some ink flow. We're back. And we now have ink flow. So I just dipped this in water and then wiped it off with a paper towel and I saw ink on the paper towel so I figured it would be writing. And this does write better than the Pilot Blue Black. So what do I think about this pen? Well, for one, it gets no rating because it's not worthy of a rating. Is it an interesting adventure? Yes. Is it one I recommend for anybody? No, unless you're absolutely must have a push button writing instrument that kind of works like a fountain pen when it does work. But it's certainly going to take a lot of effort on your part to keep it working. But the nib is smooth, and it does lay down a nice line when it is writing. So if you don't mind carrying around that little bottle of water, then this might be the pen for you. It is certainly not a pen for me. 
So that's the end of this video. I must very much thank the viewer who sent me this pen and wanted to hear my thoughts on it, and now they have them. For $5, is it worth it? Well, I'd have to admit that for $5, it's a fun experiment. But as an everyday writer, it leaves a lot to be desired. We've reached the end of this video, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you find a pen that works better than this one and that you enjoy putting ink on paper with. I hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy and finding a pen to write with. Enjoy putting ink down. Now it is the end and we will say bye until we reach some more videos of 2022.